Hello again and welcome to another tutorial. This time we're moving on uh, to look at the Heidel layer mask. I find this particularly useful and uh, I use it quite a lot so hopefully this will be of some use to you in uh, editing your astrophotography photographs. Right, um, what I've got here is the uh, picture of the Orion Nebula and when I've um, taken my photographs I stack them in the program Deep Sky stacker which is free you can get it online uh, just google it you'll find it and um, when it's stacked you get this image here and then when you've worked on it and done all the things you need to do you end up with a much better image uh, like this one this is the same image it's just been uh, run through photoshop with um, star reductions Heidel layer masks, high pass filters, etc. etc. But today we just want to look at the Heidel layer mask and uh, its uses because it's very, very useful. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flick back to the first image of uh, the Orion Nebula. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crop it first. So, I'm just going to use my little crop tool up there and uh, drag that across. When you are uh, working on your astrophotographies, uh, your shots, what you're going to do first of all is use levels and curves. Um, that's another tutorial in itself, but I want today to, like I said, to concentrate on the Heidel layer mask. So um, I will do a tutorial on level and curves, but there's plenty of them out there if you want to go and take a look at them, which will teach you the basics of levels and curves. But that's obviously your first step. Uh, but what we're going to do today is just show you how to use the Heidel layer mask to um, to selectively add colour and changes that you make to your images. So I'm just going to do a few quick changes in this image first. First I'm going to go to Image Adjustment Levels and I'm just going to use a little grey slider just to bring up um, the intensity there. I'm going to say OK. And then um, with that done I'm going to use use curves. So I'm going to go to adjustment levels and then curves underneath that. And I'm just going to increase the contrast um, by making a simple little curve like that. Look at that last shape. So you put a point in the middle and then one down there and one up there and just move it into a little S shape. And that immediately increases the contrast. Okay, that'll do for now. You'll notice that with the Orion Nebula you tend to burn out the core here, but you can use the Heidel layer mask to bring that back with a, another image of the nebula and just the core which is taken at a lower exposure, and then you use the Heidel layer mask to bring the core back in again. Right, so Heidel layer mask, what are we going to do with it? First of all, let's duplicate this layer by dragging it down to the little icon next to the rubbish bin, which duplicates it for us and gives us a background copy duplicated layer. And we'll work with this, and what we're going to do first of all is we're just going to boost the colour. You can see there's a bit of colour there in the nebula. We're going to boost that significantly now. So we're going to go to Image, Adjustment, and we're going to go to Match Colour, and I'm going to pump up the colour intensity I'm going to take it all the way so it's completely exaggerated for you. Um, you'll probably go about 150 normally. Um, well, let's go with 141. That'll do for now. You can fiddle with the slider yourself until you get it right. Anyway, so we're going to say OK for that. And what we've done in our background copy is we've been boosting the colour. So if I tick that off, you can see we've got that colour increased. I'm going to do that one more time. So that's uh, image adjustment. Um, match color and slide it up again. So we've got really intense colors there. Way more than I'd need, but it's just to show you how we can add it later on. So say OK. Now what that does is it applies that boosted color to the whole of the image, which looks pretty horrible. 
never fear because we're now going to use the hide all layer mask so looking up here at the layers we're going to go to add a hide all layer mask so we go to layer and you go down to layer mask and you select hide all and what this does is it creates a little black layer mask here this is your hide all layer mask and in between the two you've got this little chain if you click on that it will break the link between the two and if you click it back on again it will uh, connect the two again and what we're looking at here is the background the original background without any changes made because it's hiding all the effect with the color boost that we made so to bring this back and to add it selectively to the areas that we want we now have to go over here to the foreground and background selector and make sure that white is set as your foreground color and black is your background color we can do that by selecting the default foreground and background colors and then just selecting the arrow to switch between one or the other but we want the white in place so with that done we now move up and select our brush select the brush tool um, and for this I'm going to right click here and just use a softish brush with a soft edge increase the size a little bit to about that's big enough I think that will do and um, up here in your opacity you can set your opacity to 50% 20% good idea to fiddle with those a little bit just so that you don't splodge too much on there straight away okay so what we're really going to do now is paint on that color boost so we'll start up here in the nebula area where there's all those dust lanes and we're just going to gently add that onto there and you can see as I work away on that it starts to add the color back uh, that bright intense color that we added to it but we're adding it selectively only to the areas that we want to add it to um, this little bit here is a nice bit of red in there just keep going across that until you start to bring that out and in there and it's just like painting on the colors this is what you're doing and you can just boost the colors specifically in the areas where you want them to be hmm. there we go now if you overdo it and you don't like the effect you can just press control alt z on your keyboard and that will get rid of the, what you've done and you can start again or if you go over here to your foreground and background colors and switch them over with the black one set at the, at the front and start again it will take it away so if I do that with the black it will just get rid of what I've done and hide it because white reveals and black conceals as I have said in many other tutorials so I'm just going to go back to my white background and using this hide all layer mask like this it's not restrained to just adding color like this you can use it for all kinds of things so for instance if you'd knock down the saturation or you'd increase the um, the color you know you can then just apply that selectively to different areas of your image and another use for it as well is if you've got another image of just the core you can put that as a layer up here and then again apply a hide all layer mask and then just gently bring in the core again so the hide all layer mask is really really useful um, the more you practice with it the more you'll use it and uh, when you've finished adding your color you'll go over here you'll notice that the hide all layer mask is just here so if I press alt and click So that's what I've been doing, but I've actually applied a blur filter here. You could do the same, just go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, or Gaussian blur, however you say it, and just apply a blur to that of about 5.3 or 5.0%, and that will just blur your image um, and make uh, the effect that you're doing not so noticeable around the edges. And now if I 
I finished there now adding that colour. So if I click off the um, and bring it back again, it's quite subtle, but it does the job. So there we go. That's a little tutorial on how to use the hide all layer mask. And um, you'll notice up there when you select your layers, you've got another one which is reveal all. Um, which does just that, it reveals everything and then you use the black foreground um, selection there to hide it. Just remember white reveals and black conceals and you'll get it right. Um, and have fun using the hide all layer mask. Uh, next tutorial I'll be looking at levels and curves and the historogram and how to do that. But until then, if you need any help as usual, astrocasso.blogspot.com and I'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.